Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we are going to be doing best of 2021 makeup. I'm also going to be doing a video where I do best of 2021 beauty that's not makeup because I feel like there's too much to cover in just one video and I have narrowed it down as much as I possibly can in this video. There are certainly other drugstore products that have been released this year that I absolutely love but this is the cream of the crop, the best of the best stuff that I find that I have reached for so much this year that I had to make it into this video. I have a kind of best of every quarter this year videos that I can link down below as well where I talked about my absolute favorite drugstore releases every three months. So if you're looking for more recommendations, that would be a good place to start as well as my what's new at the drugstore videos. I kind of talk about all the hits and misses. So with all that being said, let's get into the best of the best drugstore makeup of 2021. All right, first up is primer, and there's only one primer that I'm including in this video. There are so many amazing primers that have been released this year, but I feel like this is the one primer that I've never received any negative feedback on. It seems to work for everyone, every skin type. It's like a unicorn primer, and it is the NYX Marshmallow Primer. It's silicone-free, it's moisturizing, but it's also smoothing. It makes your makeup last longer, it makes it go on smoother, it does everything that you want a primer to do. And like I said, it seems to work for every skin type. I had dry skin during my pregnancy, and it worked for me then, and my skin's going back to being more oily now, and it still works for me now. The only things I'll mention about this is that it does have a fragrance, it kind of smells like marshmallows, and then it's it's also on the pricey side. So if you're not sure, you can purchase the little trial size like I did, but be warned, you're gonna go through it fast and wish you got the big one. But this is a good way to not splurge and test it out, see if it works for your skin. All right, next up are base products. And I believe all of these have been released this year with the exception of one. One of these is a new discovery for me, thanks to you guys. This was in a video where I tested your recommendations and I ended up falling in love with it. So let's start with that product. And it is the Purito, Purito uh, BB Cream. This is so good. You guys know I've loved that Misha BB cream forever, but it is pretty heavily fragranced. This one is fragrance-free, but it also does have the UVA, UVB protection and the full coverage that the Misha one provides. What I will say about this one is that it definitely leans on the dewier side. So when my skin was drier, I was reaching for this a lot more often than I am now that it's going back to my oily skin. So if you are looking to try one of the Korean BB creams, I would say if you have drier skin, you will love this. If you have more oily skin, I would go with the Misha one. They're both dewy, but this one is definitely more radiant. This shade Sand Beige is perfect for me when I have a little bit of a tan. It just leaves this beautiful radiant finish that I was just obsessed with when my skin was drier. And I feel like I'm gonna be pulling it back out now that we're getting into the winter time. And that youthful glowy radiance is something that we're all looking for. All right, next up, along the same lines as that first one, we have a tinted moisturizer. This is the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. This is under $5, I believe it's $4.99. This has hyaluronic acid, squalling oil. It's oil-free and it's just so, so good. It claims to be sheer to medium. It's definitely buildable. I don't know that I would say you can build it all the way up to a medium, but definite solid light to medium coverage you can get out of this. So it's perfect for like my skin but better days. Whenever people used to ask me for a dupe for the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer, there wasn't really a great one, and I feel like this one is the most similar finish to the Laura Mercier one that I have found. And this is a fraction, fraction, fraction of the price. Definitely one of the best drugstore tinted moisturizers I have ever tried. And then kind of moving along to more coverage. Next up is not gonna be a surprise to anyone. This is the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Serum. If you have not tried this, you need this in your life. It is a dupe for the Giorgio Armani Foundation. This is the most beautiful foundation I think that I have ever put on my skin. I have the Giorgio Armani one, I have a lot of high-end ones, I have a ton of drugstore ones, and right now, in this moment, I have to say that this is my number one favorite base product. It's oily skin friendly, it's not going to get super duper shiny. The packaging sucks, the packaging is terrible, it's so messy. Other than that, I'm obsessed with this. You guys have heard me talk about this a million times, so I'm not going to go on about it, but it's oily skin friendly, it's long wearing, it's natural, it is magical. So if you've been hearing about this over and over again and you're like, it can't be as good as everyone's saying it is, trust me when I tell you it's as good as what everyone is saying and you need this in your life. So if you don't try any other product in this video, try this one. We have two more foundations. I just talked about these in my 
top three in every category video, so I'm gonna kind of talk through them quickly. But this first one is the Joa Beauty Primedation. This is what I am wearing right now on my skin. Again, it's got like a nice radiant natural finish. It does lean on the dewier side, so super oily skin, you may not love this, but this has such amazing coverage, a really good shade range. It has hyaluronic acid, collagen, and crystallite in it. It's called Primedation because it's supposed to act as a primer and foundation, but with those types of ingredients, it's also kind of acting as skincare. So I don't know where my top is, on this one but that's fine because I leave it on top of my vanity anyway. I believe right now you can only find this on their website though I know CVS carries Joa Beauty. I just haven't seen this foundation in stores yet but I expect it will be in stores pretty soon if you're looking to wait to see it in person. Um, I would keep checking your CVS. And then last but not least is the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. If you can't tell there's kind of a theme here. I feel like in 2021 this was the year that I went from liking really matte finishes to really radiant natural skin like finish even if it means that I get shiny throughout the day I'd rather that than look really flat and matte I think that's partly because the trends have changed and I also think that's partly because I am now in my 30s this super matte look just isn't flattering on my skin anymore this is another one of those foundations that is more skin like I would say the Joa Beauty and the Purito BB cream are very dewy like they lean more radiant and then i would say that this the true skin and this l'oreal one lean more just skin like not super glowy but very very natural i feel like it's hard to find really natural looking products that are long wearing because most of the time long wearing means kind of more of a matte finish and these are both products that will give you the longevity that those matte products will give you but make your skin look like skin even if you may have to blot throughout the day all right moving right along to concealers this first one is one that I fell in love with earlier in the year when I did a video talking all about Target beauty lines that are not talked about nearly enough and this is one of the ones that I fell in love with through that video and it's the Undone Beauty Concealer. I have mine in the shade Medium Light. It's unique in that you can't really see because I've used so much of mine but it has three different sections in here where you have light coverage, you have medium coverage, and then you have really full coverage which I like because sometimes you're just trying to brighten an area. You're kind of using your concealer to highlight part of your skin. You just want light coverage. You don't want a really thick, heavy one. And then other times you're trying to cover a huge blemish and you need that full, full coverage. And then sometimes you want one that's somewhere in the middle, maybe for your under eyes where you need that coverage, but you don't want it to be heavy and cakey. This kind of gives you all three concealers in one. I believe it's $10, which is really good for three different types of concealer. This is super moisturizing if you have really dry under eyes and this stuff can cover some serious issues. So this brand in general has been a favorite of mine in 2021. Just a really great underrated beauty line. Next up is a concealer that is great, especially for more oily skin. This is the Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer. I feel like pairing this with the tinted moisturizer is really great because this is really full coverage. You can have most of your skin really natural, your skin showing through, and then cover your, any issues with this because this is really full coverage and long wearing. Like I said, it's oily skin friendly. It's going to cover what you need it to cover. It's going to last all day. It has sort of a matte finish and the price point, I mean, you just can't beat it. Wet n Wild's price points are incredible. All right, next up is the Catrice True Skin Concealer. This just, this whole line has been such a winner for me this year. Catrice in general has just blown me away. I'm so bummed that they're leaving Ulta, but I don't blame them. Now they're going to probably make more money selling directly now that they've become so popular. But this concealer is everything. It's what I have on right now. It has hyaluronic acid. I find it to be hydrating, but not too hydrating. So I think this would work for all skin types. I, especially during the winter, have drier under eyes. So this will be a go-to for me in the coming months, but it has been ever since I picked it up. It is so thin in consistency. It blends like a dream. And like I said, it has a nice hydrated finish without it being too glowy. You definitely need to set this with a powder. Whereas like the incognito, if you don't have super oily skin, you could probably get away without setting that. This one needs to be set, but you do get that really, really nice skin-like finish. And then last but not least is my newest find, and it's the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. Lately, when I am just gonna be home with the kids and I don't really wanna put on a full face of makeup, I've just been putting this on. I put it on under my eyes, kind of around my nose, wherever I get some redness. I've been throwing on that Lottie London tinted lip balm and then throwing in like the wow brow or something in my brows and good to go. It still looks like I'm not wearing any makeup. It's very minimal effort, but it just makes me feel a little bit more put together. This is 
again super natural it's like the word of this video for my skin products is natural and glowy and skin like and this one checks all those boxes I know it's kind of hard to find right now because it's selling out everywhere but if you can get your hands on it I highly recommend all right next up is powder and two of these are new this year and then one is a powder that's been out for a long time but I just now jumped on the bandwagon and that powder is the elf halo glow setting powder that's what I have on right now and I feel like it sets my makeup but you can still see the glowiness on my skin it doesn't completely mattify and take away the luminosity that that joa beauty foundation gives my skin but it prevents my makeup and my concealer from transferring from getting really creasy and does the job of a powder without sort of looking like you have a powder on so many people have been talking about this for so long but i'm jumping on the bandwagon in 2021 so if you like me are late to the game i highly recommend this one all right next up to round it out this whole line has been a slam dunk for me is the Catrice True Skin Mineral Loose Powder. It's hard for me to like new powders because I am very set in my ways with my powders and my favorites, but this one has definitely crept up to my makeup drawer. This has hyaluronic acid. I have mine in 010 Transparent Matte. It sets my makeup beautifully. I would say if I'm comparing it to the Halo Glow, it's a little bit more on the matte side than the Halo Glow, but definitely not a matte finish, just more matte than the Halo Glow, which is quite glowy. So if you want a loose powder kind of somewhere in between, this is a good one to try. All right, and then the next powder that is another recent find for me that I have been loving is the Broken NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop Setting Powder. This again says it's mattifying. I wouldn't say this is a super matte powder if I'm comparing it to like Rimmel Stay Matte or the Wet n Wild Loose Powder. This has more of a natural finish. I shared this in my latest dupes video as a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder. It's a really good kind of T-zone powder because it does mattify just a bit, but it's also very blurring and very flattering on the skin. All right, moving on to bronzers. There are several bronzers that I love this year, but there's only one that really, really, really sticks out to me as my absolute must have of 2021. So I narrowed this down to only one product. And let me know in the comments if you already knew what I was gonna say, but it's the Juvia's Place Bronzed Palette. This is the best bronzer that I have tried in a very long time. I have mine in the shade Tan. It comes with a mirror and then two different shades. There are so many different options. If you have super fair skin, super deep skin, there is a bronzer for you. These blend seamlessly, last all day. This is my current favorite go-to bronzer that I am using every single day and a must-have of 2021. All right, next up are blushes. And the first is the one that I am wearing right now. It's this ColourPop Cookie Cluster Cheek Palette. I'm having trouble finding these. I don't know if they were limited edition, but I believe they're still sold on their website. I just don't see them on Ulta anymore. But this is such a beautiful, beautiful blush formula. I love all of the shades in here. They're super pigmented, almost like a cream to powder type of situation. That's how soft these powders feel. The colors in here are absolutely stunning. I love the kind of warm shades as well as this like just pinched, really pinky pink. Super underrated blush in my opinion and one of my absolute favorites. All right, next up is a newer find for me and this is the Alme Healthy Hue Blush. I've talked about this before as a dupe for the Patrick Ta blushes. I don't know if you guys can see just the subtle luminosity that this has. If you're not really a highlighter person but you want a little bit of a healthy glow to your cheeks, I feel like this is the perfect product. It's not it's not like an overt glow. It's nothing crazy. It just looks very subtle, sort of like just dewy skin. And that's what I love about this blush. And I love this shade. I wanna say it's called So Peachy, um, but I will link it down below. Okay, next up for highlighters. This has been a year of winning highlighters for me. I feel like it's been a winner for foundations, concealers, highlighters, and mascaras. If I had to say like what, well, lipsticks have been really good. It's been a really good year for makeup. But the first one that I have absolutely fallen in love with this year is the Flower Beauty Day Glow. If you are into cream highlighters, this is incredible. Find me a luxury highlighter that is as good as this one. This is just like a really balmy texture and it goes on absolutely beautifully onto the skin. I just use my makeup sponge after I'm done applying my foundation. I'll use my makeup sponge and just apply it wherever I want to highlight. You can put it on top of powder and it blends beautifully. You can put it under powder. You can wear it without any foundation for a healthy glow. This is stunning. All right, and then next up for my two powder highlight favorites. The first is this Catrice More Than Glow 
stunning, stunning, creamy, velvety texture. I like more natural looking highlights and this is definitely natural, but also buildable. So you can get that blingy highlight if you keep layering this over and over, but it's not going to be like that right off the bat. And then last but not least is probably the highlight I've used the most and it's the Revolution Glow Splendor Ultra Highlighter. I've talked about this before. It is stunning. Don't be deterred by the reviews. I want to say it's like 3.5 stars. Those people are crazy. This stuff is incredible. All right, next up, let's talk brows. There's only two brow products that have really, really stood out to me this year. And the first is the Joa Beauty Brow Down To Me Brow Pencil. This is one of my new favorite, if not my new favorite brow pencil from the drugstore or just in general. It's blendable, it's not too pigmented, it has a spoolie. It's this really pretty baby blue color. So if you are looking for a new brow product, Go to CVS and pick this one up. And then next up is not a newer product. This is a product I found thanks to you guys again. This is the Milani Clear Brow Gel. And just so you know, the videos where I try your recommendations are very selfishly motivated because clearly they work because a couple of these favorites are from you guys. And this one is from one of those videos. This is the Clear Brow Gel by Milani. This has been my go-to brow gel. I really like the Juvia's Place one as well, but this one is more affordable and I feel like it's just as good. I can't think of another brow setting gel that holds my brows. My brows can be pretty unruly better than this one. All right, moving on to eyeshadow. Of course, the one eyeshadow palette that I want to talk about is downstairs. And if you've been following me for a while, you know once I'm up here, I'm up here because my kids are downstairs with my mother-in-law and if they see me, it's game over. So... I will insert a picture right here and you guys have seen me talk about this a million times, but it is the Essence Stay Wild palette. Essence in general has been the winner in terms of drugstore eyeshadow formula in my opinion. The smaller palettes are amazing, but I would say if I had to pick one palette of the year for me personally, it would be the Into the Wild palette by Essence. The colors in there are so my language, and I want to say that is my most used eyeshadow palette of the entire year. So I'm only going to mention one, but I have to give an honorable mention shout out to the palette that has been inspiring me ever since I picked it up this month, and it is the BH Cosmetics Holiday Palette. These are always so impressive, but I feel like especially this year, it is just so inspiring. Every time I open this palette, I want to play with color. It's perfect for different Christmas looks. I am just absolutely obsessed with this palette. So even though I can't necessarily say it's like my 2021 favorites because I've hardly used it, I am so in love with this and I think it would make an amazing gift. This was in my favorite slash gift guide video. All right, next up we have mascara. And there are three mascaras this year that have really just blown me away and have been added to my absolute favorite mascaras list. The first is the Big Mood Mascara by e.l.f. This one is amazing for volume and for curl. The next is the Anti-Gravity. I can't think of a better mascara right now for curl. I posted a reel yesterday and I was wearing this mascara. That was one of my most common DMs was, what mascara are you wearing? And this is the one. This packs a big punch. If you don't pick up any other mascara this year, this is the one. I have been recommending this left and right. And then last but not least, this is a very new find for me, but I can tell really quickly when it comes to mascara what I'm gonna love. And it's the new Voluminous L'Oreal Mascara. This is the New York Balm Mascara. It's what I have on right now. And I did that kind of like first impressions video with this. And there was zero flaking, zero smudging. This wore beautifully and I've worn it every day since then and I am absolutely loving this. So really rare for me to love that many mascaras that have been launched in just one year because I feel like everything's been done when it comes to mascara, but those three have really just blown me away. All right, and then next up we have lips. And this was hard for me to narrow down because there are a lot of lip products that I've loved this year. But in terms of lip liner, there are two that I feel like I've reached for the most. The first is a new find for me. This is the NYX Slide On Glide On Nude Suede Shoes Eyeliner, or eyeliner, lip liner. I love the formula of this. The color on it is beautiful, but the formula on this is so long wearing. I will sometimes just wear this and fill in my lips for a kind of matte lip look that is not going to budge. This is the most long wearing lip liner I think I've ever tried. And then the other is not gonna be surprised. I think I wear this in like every single video. This is the Milani Understatement Lip Liner. I know on Ulta's website, there's different shades of brown. I wanna say toffee brown is the closest. I actually got this as a part of the Salt and Pepper collaboration with Milani. So mine is brown, it's called Shoop. Um, 
but it looks very similar to their more permanent toffee brown color if you are looking for this. It's what I have on right now. It's what I always have on. Absolutely obsessed with this. For lipstick, I have been blown away by so many lipsticks this year, but I have to narrow it down to like I could not live without. And the first is this Lay News line by L'Oreal. This is like, I mean, it's YSL lipstick. It feels just like YSL lipstick. The shade New Impertinent and New Confident are must-haves. It's moisturizing and kind of almost like glossy looking, it, but it also stains your lips. So it's like this perfect combination. I wanna say the shade New Confident is my most used shade of this range, but they have so many beautiful nudes. Depending on your skin tone and what kind of pink you prefer, I'm wearing the shade New Impertinent right now. And the other just extreme standout for me are these L'Oreal liquid lipsticks. You guys know how much I love the matte version of these, but they released these shine liquid lipsticks, which are basically a liquid lipstick that has the staying power of a matte liquid lipstick, but with a shine finish. I have no idea how they did that. It looks like a gloss, but it lasts like for hours and it is so stunning. This whole range is absolutely beautiful. And then for a matte liquid lipstick, the new NYX Lingerie XXL is like the NYX Lingerie line on steroids. It is so much better in my opinion. It's long wearing, it's matte, but it's not drying and it's really flattering on the lips. I have the shade Flaunt It and I think if you've been following me for a while, you know this is one of my most used lipsticks of the year. So if you prefer more of a matte finish, I would say this is the one to try. Then I have to mention this gloss, this Undone Beauty Gloss in the shade Peony Pearls. I'm actually gonna put some on to top off this look. It's so beautiful. It lasts a really long time. It's not at all sticky. It just gives you that wet, really comfortable look and is another product by Undone Beauty that has just blown me away. I almost put their cream blush in here as well because I love that stuff. I almost put so many different products in this video, let's be honest, but I had to cut myself off somewhere. And that is everything. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have whiplash from how fast I went through all those products, everything will be linked down below for your reference. Let me know what you guys have been loving this year too, if there's something that I didn't mention that you have been loving. And I will see you guys in my next video where I will be talking all about non-makeup favorites of the year. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.